Welcome back to the next installment of our platform tutorial. In the last episode, we got our enemy to shoot at us, to turn around if he sees us, and then start shooting in our direction. He, we got him to stop moving when he's shooting. But there's a couple of little things I want to change because I don't like how long it takes him to turn around. And also what you will notice is if I go back to layout one, if I drag out a copy and put another one over here and I do this and that, watch and see um, if I don't get killed, if I can dodge these bullets. Ah, oh, goodness. What will happen is this enemy, when he shoots me, the other one will also fire a bullet. Uh, you can't see it now because I'm terrible at my own games, but take my word for it, that's what will happen. Also, I want to change this timer because. Um, five seconds every time I die, that's annoying. Let's change that first. Um, and then what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna create multiple enemies. Um, we're gonna make it so that each individual enemy responds to me individually by using a function with a perimeter where we identify which one we're talking to. Um, I'm also gonna fix the issue when he doesn't turn around as much. We're gonna set the timer to 60 seconds. Um, and then we're going to see where that leaves us. So let's let's do a bit of fixing. Um, let's make it so we can just drag out multiple versions of this one and they'll all respond in their own way. Um, so yeah, let's get straight on and do just that. So back into a eventually one code. Let's change the timer, double click. Let's give ourselves the full 60 seconds because we know that works now. We know that when we die, we respawn back to where we want to at the start. So we can change that. We also need to change it in one other place. In the functions tab down here on the player death function we've said set the timer back to five after we die we need to set that to 60. now we've got the full 60 seconds to play the level which is much better um, then over on the enemies tab what i want to do with all of this here all of this um all of these lines of, of code after the player sees us i want to stick that in its own function because when we say if enemy one has line of sight to the player we need to identify which enemy it is because at the moment we're just saying if enemy one which is this one and this one has line of sight to the player then shoot which is why when this guy sees us this guy will also fire off a bullet towards us as well so let's let's do that now so right click add a function we're going to call this enemy shooting and just hit OK. We're going to right click, we're going to add a perimeter and the perimeter is going to basically be um, something that we have to pass through in order for the function to work. So when we call enemy shooting I want to pass through a perimeter which asks us which enemy we're dealing with. So we're going to do that by, by um, asking it to pass in the enemy's UID, um, which we can leave at a number. And the UID of the enemy, if you click on him, is this little number here. So this one's every single every single object in your game has a different UID. The player has a different one. That little sprite that respawns us has a different one. The text has a different one of the platform, each individual platform, no matter how many we drag out. So we can use that function or use functions to identify specifically which object in the game we want to deal with. So now when we call this function, it's gonna ask us to pass that perimeter so we can tell it which one we want to deal with. So click on the whole thing, hit B, create a blank sub event. Um, so on enemy function shooting, um, enemy UID, we now need to choose the specific enemy. So pick by unique ID and then if you just start typing enemy you'll see the enemy UID with a little kind of tag on it here which is the same as the one the perimeter tag here that's the one we want to select so now whatever we put here will reference this one so let's go and grab all of this let's drag it down let's pop it in there um, what we also want to do is with this is the enemy less you know 
further left of the player or further right of the player. I also want to stick this in the same the same function because again we're dealing with the individual enemy. We want to know if this specific enemy is further left or not from the player, so we can then change the uh, the direction um, accordingly. I'm also going to take away mirrored, and I'm going to use the um, the directional uh, the directional um, instance variable. So if we are less than or equal to the player's x position, I want to set the value of the direction to right, and I'm just going to do an else statement because why not? If it's not that, then we're going to set it to left. Um, I also want to play around with this uh, slightly as well, because at the moment I've got the wait five seconds after we've spawned the bullet and shot, which is why he's got a slight delay. So he fires off a bullet, then turns around and faces. If we just simply just put that above, then that should fix that whole that whole issue there as well. Um, what I also want to do, I don't think it's making any difference at all, and there's no point having it, is I just want to get rid of the set group collisions deactivated. I don't think we need that. The movement one we can leave in for now, but I may, um, I may well change that um, as I get more into the code here. So now we've got this enemy function um, that we've just created. When the player has line of sight to us, we can simply just go in and call that function enemy shooting. Um, it's going to ask us for the enemy's UID, so we can simply just type in sprite underscore enemy one dot uid which is the perimeter that we're asking for um, and now when we have line of sight the enemy that has line of sight to us is going to be the one that attacks us which is fantastic and exactly what we want um, i'm also going to delete the collisions activated up there so the movement i'm going to have him for now because i don't want him to be running around shooting frantically at us. I want them to just come to a stop, turn and face us, and then start attacking. Um, let me just see if that works. It's, it, it might have a few little issues, but it, we'll see if I could stand still long enough not to get shot. Yeah, so he's still moving. I mean, it's working a lot better. He turns and shoots immediately. It's very difficult, but it's only this enemy now that's attacking. And if I get past this guy, and go over to the other guy, he's going to do the same thing. So if you notice, they're going to, they're patrolling left and right, but if they see us, they'll stop. He's not going to make it all the way over. So if I go back here, he's not going to make it all the way over to his collision point where he turns. He's immediately going to turn and start chasing me, which is great. And then again, same thing with this one. And we can put as many of these guys down as we want, as long as we give them the boundaries, as long as we give them these boundaries here, so that they don't fall off the level when we're not near them. They're just going to sit there patrolling. I could go back and he's still there. It's going to just ignore me. Can't see me through the block. Um, and that's great. So the only other thing I want to do now is make it so that he stops. Um, I've, I've, I think that's, um, that's going to make it a little bit easier, a little bit nicer, a little bit more polished um, if we can get that um, AI feature in. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set up a new instance variable on the actual enemy um, to tell us whether he's attacking us or not. So if we click on any of these two enemies, click on instance variables, add new instance variable, and I'm going to add a boolean variable, and I'm just going to call it attacking. Boolean. Obviously, it's going to be unchecked to start with because when we start the game, he's not going to be attacking us, but we'll, we'll action that. We'll, we'll switch that over to yes um, as soon as he sees us, um, and then that will, that will mean he's attacking. So... If we go back up to here with shooting, um, if um, enemy one uh, has line of sight to the player, we're obviously going to call um, the the enemy shoot function. Um, but what I want to do is I want to add in, um, I want to change the variable of enemy attacking uh, to say true. 
So first of all, let's go up to when he's not got um, a line of sight to us. Let's just set that to false. So set Boolean, attacking, set it to false. So as soon as he can't see us anymore, it's going to go back to false. Um, what I want to do though is I, I don't want to put the enemy attacking true here. And the reason for it is it's not going to stop him. Um, let, me, let me just explain further. Let me just put in here. I need to put this condition in. Uh, compare instance variable. Sorry. Compare uh, Boolean. If he is attacking, what I want to do is I want to disable the, um, the movement um, group. So I'm going to copy out. Uh, a, a version of that and I'm going to change that to deactivate it. So as soon as we're attacking I want him to stop moving but I don't want to put attacking true here because it's going to be subject to all of the this delay and all of this stuff and it's not going to work quickly enough um, so it's, it's basically going to mean the enemy still keeps chasing us down um, before he's kind of turned around um, and 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 attack and started to attack us. So where I'm going to put this is down here, right under the command where we say if we're further left than the player, then turn right, and if we're further right than the player, turn left. So I'm going to put one there, and I'm going to put one there, and that should be enough to get this working how I want it. So let's just check. Sorry if that was a bit of a ramble. No, for some reason, he's still moving towards us. Let me just check. So I've got, if he doesn't have line of sight, he's not going to, he's going to set attacking to false. If we do have line of sight, we're going to call the enemy shoot function. If we are attacking, uh, here we go. We need to deactivate. That's where. If we are attacking, we're going to deactivate movement. When we're not attacking, we're going to activate movement. That should now sort the problem. There. So he stood still. He's attacking us. Can't see. Oh. He can't see me. He's just patrolling left and right. Doesn't even know I'm there. Drop down, turns around, shoots. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Sorry if it was a bit long-winded, um, go back and watch the video a few times just so you can kind of get, get it a little bit clearer. Um, but yeah, that's perfect. And then if we head over to the other guy, can't see me, yep, he turns, he chases me down. Now every single time we create that enemy, it's going to work independently by itself the system's going to know which one we're dealing with. If we kill one, again, it's only going to kill that one. Um, and we can just place them on the levels now wherever we want to. They're their own separate little block, their own unit with their own event sheet. And they're going to work by themselves. So, yeah, that's great. Oh, one other thing I want to do under collisions. I just want to make it so that that enemy bullet gets destroyed when it hits the walls. So, let's select Sprite Enemy Bullet. On collision with another object, um, TB ground, and then I want to say enemy bullet, start typing it in, destroy, and now when I play, if he shoots, yeah, the, the bullets just, they, they don't go through. Perfect. Now we're safe up on the ledges. He can't shoot me. They just get destroyed. Perfect. That's it for today. Um, I'll see you in the next one um, where we'll add some more improvements um, to the game and we'll start making it into a nice, uh, real nice little little platform game. Uh, may even give the player some health points, but we'll decide as we go. Perfect. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.